Russian troops are concentrating their heaviest offensive near the city of Pokrovsk. What is the situation there? Ukrainian tank crews are undergoing training on German Leopard 2A4 tanks in Poland. The biggest prisoner exchange between Russia and the West, who was released. Hi, I'm Eva Kucherenko. This is United 24 Media. Ukrainian paratroopers of the 79th Brigade repelled another large-scale Russian attack in the Kurahova direction in the Donetsk region. This marks the second massive offensive attempt to break through the Ukrainian defense. Russian troops launched the attack using 57 armored vehicles, including 10 tanks. Eight out of 10 tanks were destroyed by Ukrainian paratroopers. The losses of the Russian side also include 12 armored vehicles, nine motorcycles, and a buggy. During an explosion at the Alanya military airfield in Russia's Murmansk region, two Tupoli heavy bombers were damaged, reported Andriy Yusef, a representative of the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense. He commented to Radio Svoboda that the explosion occurred on July 25th. I can confirm the damage to two 222M3S. And there are corresponding tail numbers, tail number 33 and tail number 31. There are holes in the upper part of the fuselage of tail number 33. And tail number 31 was also damaged. Ukrainian drones struck an oil depot in Voze in the Russian Kursk region, reported the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine. According to them, the security service, in cooperation with miscellaneous defense forces, targeted the oil field Logistics Center N-43, with a UAV strike setting the depot on fire. Additional details are currently being corroborated. Russian forces are concentrating their heaviest offensive near the city of Pokrovsk, located on a key supply route strategic to the Ukrainian war effort. A recent update issued by the General Staff of Ukraine highlights the intensity in the Pokrovsk direction where Ukrainian troops repelled more than 50 assaults in the last 24 hours, the brunt of the biggest Russian push seen since the beginning of the full-scale invasion. This footage shows the work of the local police force that uses the road of life every day and each month they evacuate approximately 400 people. The TO-504 highway, nicknamed the Road of Life, spans across several key locations in the east of Ukraine, including Pokrovsk, Kostantinivka, Chasivyar, and the Taryetsk areas. This freeway is the lifeblood for military logistics and transportation. For this reason, the Russians are desperately trying to cut it off for themselves. Nearby civilian territories suffer from non-stop shelling, and the most recent assaults on the war front have intensified to a critical point. It was reported by the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine that just this week the Pokrovsk direction has seen more than 70 Russian all-out attacks and the Ukrainian defenders remain steadfast in deflecting this rising tide. At the end of July, soldiers from the 31st Brigade managed to escape encirclement near the village of Progress. The commanding officers noted the difficulty of the fighting but remained stalwart in their ability to continue standing their ground despite recent developments on the front line. The main target after the failure of the Russians in the Kharkiv region has changed. Their main direction is Pokrovsk. I would say that today it is a priority for them. Russians are also attacking Konstantinivka and Toretsk, and they have plans for Slavyansk and Zelensky. The largest number of personnel, weapons, aerial bombs and everything that the Russians have is concentrated in the Pokrovsk direction. As with any other city bordering the front line, Pokrovsk turned from a vibrant and prospering railroad town into a stronghold with non-stop shelling from Russian artillery fire, bombardments and constant fear of the impending Russian onslaught. 60,000 people still remain in Pokrovsk, with 4,000 children already evacuated from the city, says Serhii Dabryak, head of the Pokrovsk military administration. An evacuation train, according to him, departs once every eight days. In cooperation with the regional authorities, the Black continues, they have set up a designated hub in Pokrovsk for the evacuees of the Donetsk region. Refugees of war that lost their homes are provided with meals and showers, but more importantly, they have a place to stay before their relocation deep into the region of Poland. As of now, the distance from the front line to Pokrovsk remains at the 20 kilometers mark.
Okay, di ba? Gusto ba? Germany has announced the delivery of a new military aid package to Ukraine. It includes ammunition, radars, and unmanned aerial vehicles supplied through government-funded weapons initiative and Bundeswehr reserves. The package comprises eight Leopard 1A5 tanks, more than 20,000 rounds of ammunition for Jeopard anti-aircraft systems, 10 surface drones, and a field hospital. The United States will deliver new military aid package to Ukraine, as reported by the Department of Defense. The new package, worth $200 million, consists of air defense interceptors, munitions for rocket systems and artillery, anti-tank weapons. In addition, the Pentagon announced a $1.5 billion package of support to the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative funds to sustain existing U.S. equipment. In May, President Zelensky signed a bill allowing convicts to join the Ukrainian armed forces. Currently, various brigades are hurrying to recruit potential fighters from prisons across the country. Inmates are highly motivated and well-disciplined, making them suitable for the military. But how is this different from the notorious Russian Storm Z or PMC Wagner, who also recruited prisoners? In May 2024, President Zelensky signed a bill allowing convicts to join the Ukrainian armed forces. According to the Ministry of Justice, there are 27,000 people in Ukrainian jails. However, only a fraction are eligible to join the army. These days, the brigades are racing to recruit potential fighters all over Ukrainian prisons. The first thing I notice about a person is their behavior. I look for strength, bravery, and confidence. It's always up to them whether they want to join. We can't force them. What's most important to me is their motivation. I'm searching for that spark in their eyes. If it's there, we can work together. We actually thought we would end up in some kind of punishment unit, and we were okay with that. We were ready to fight. We just wanted to put our skills to use. But once we arrived and saw things for ourselves, we realized it's not so different from regular military service. Doris and Rick shared the same cell in prison. Both were fighting before, and both got in jail due to a car accident resulting in death. With them is Leshy, from the same prison, convicted for the same crime, but with no combat experience. Yet. You know, when I was in prison, a lot of bad stuff happened to me. My oldest son was taken out by the enemy, and my mom passed away, and my son-in-law, who was leading an aerial reconnaissance unit, went missing. I had to go out there to protect the old folks and kids and find my son-in-law. Ukrainian tank crews are undergoing training on German Leopard 2A4 tanks as part of the EU military assistance mission in support of Ukraine. NATO shared a video from a military training facility in Poland where the Ukrainian soldiers are being taught. The Leopard 2A4 battle tank is the mainstay of the alliance, including for Norway and Poland, whose instructors are aiming to make the Ukrainian trainees self-sufficient in the operation of these tanks. Ukrainians are, let's say, our Slavic brothers. Another thing is that our state borders Ukraine, so in a way we are a frontline state, and so Ukraine's victory is in our interest, because we might be next when it comes to war. What we're aiming to do here is to give the Ukrainians the ability to become more self-sufficient in training other Ukrainians on the main battle tank. Russian representatives must be present at the second peace summit in November. Otherwise, it will not achieve viable results, stated President Volodymyr Zelensky. According to him, this position is shared by many countries. He also underlined that the conditions for starting negotiations with Russia have not changed. Moscow has to withdraw all Russian troops from Ukrainian territories, and this doesn't mean only by military means. A just peace for Ukraine means the full restoration of our territorial integrity, and this means not only by force of arms. I believe that today we will be on the front line for as long as Russia wants to fight. We will have a plan ready, we will have a strong position, most countries will agree with this plan, and this plan will be on the table. Then we can resolve these issues diplomatically, if Russia so desires. An action plan to achieve peace in Ukraine will be developed by the end of November, said the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky earlier. 
In an interview with Japan state broadcaster NHK, he emphasized that he cannot respond to calls for a ceasefire while Russia continues to occupy Ukrainian territory. In the early hours of July 31st, Russia launched a massive drone strike on Ukraine. The country was attacked by 89 Shahed drones and a KH-59 guided missile from the airspace of the occupied Kherson region. Ukrainian defenders successfully repelled the attack. Kyiv was the primary target, with multiple waves of drones launched from various directions. According to the commander of the Air Force of Ukraine, this was one of the most massive attacks using the Shahed-131-136 UAVs. The enemy used the same number of Shahed drones on New Year's Eve. Ukrainian air defense forces successfully intercepted and destroyed over 40 drones in Kyiv's airspace and the surrounding area. There were no reported casualties or significant damage within the capital. A Ukrainian fireman of the Kharkiv Region State Emergency Service responds to a Russian strike that hit his own house. After a massive aerial bombardment of the village of Veliki Burluk, he arrived home to extinguish the fire in which his 37-year-old wife was killed, and his 10-year-old son received burn injuries and had to be hospitalized. The state emergency service underlined that the worst thing for rescuers is to respond to a call at their own home. Since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Moscow has been responsible for committing 133,000 atrocities classified as war crimes by the Roman statute. This was stated by the head of the War Crimes Department of the Prosecutor General's Office. Among other atrocities, he lists the deportation of children, murder, sexual violence, looting, and the ill-treatment and killing of prisoners of war. This investigation is being conducted by the Prosecutor General's Office, together with the Security Services and the National Police. Specialized units have been formed to gather evidence and ensure accountability for those responsible. Defenders are paying a high price to protect Ukrainian borders. Mine blast wounds, traumatic brain injuries, spinal cord injuries and amputations are the most common cases that send soldiers to recovery rehabilitation centers. These 12 centers are spread around nine regions of Ukraine, where already more than 13,000 patients have received care since 2022. I am Sean, aka Saxon. I am 35 years old and I was originally born in Houston, Texas. Marine Sean is frying meat in the small kitchen of the rehabilitation center. Cooking is one of the exercises he does every day to recover from his injury as quickly as possible. This is his third and, as he says, his major injury which he sustained in the Harrison region in October last year. It's raining metal and stuff and so when artillery shrapnel pretty much hit where I was sleeping at, I moved a little bit and it took my arm almost completely off and stuff and a tree fell on top of my head and um, I had to wait 10 hours over there because you can't move during the day because the drone and artillery is just bad. Occupational therapy is one of the free services offered to patients at this recovery rehabilitation center, but it's not the only way to recover. I do a lot of leg exercises and balancing exercises. My balance is not exactly good anymore because I'm missing a couple of pounds on one side. Um, so do a um, arm to make my arm stronger and stuff so it can eventually get into a prosthetic very well. During the exercises, Sean is accompanied by Maria. She is an occupational therapist. The main part of my work, it's like uh, uh, be sure that our patient, they, uh, when they come home and they can get up at home, like uh, they can use the stairs, they uh, can uh, walk uh, alone with uh, without somebody helps, uh, go to the kitchen and they can like uh, open their refrigerator, like uh, uh, make some lunch for themselves. Down the hall, in a different room, another man is doing his exercises with a physiotherapist. Serhi was injured in September 2022 in the Kharkiv region. I am a soldier of the 30th Brigade. And during the battles, anti-personnel mines. These are the consequences. I had a difficult situation. In addition to a double amputation, I had a torn side, shrapnel all over my lower body. I went to a lot of hospitals. Serhi had a break in rehabilitation due to surgery on his left leg. Now he has returned to training. My task is to prepare for prosthetics as best as I can, while this leg couldn't do any physical activity for a very, very long time because of my crushed hip. Somehow, I will need to be able to stand on the prosthesis, so I will do it. 
For now, there are 12 recovery rehabilitation centers in Ukraine. They operate in nine Ukrainian regions. We have physical therapy rooms, which are for physical rehabilitation, restoring walking skills, mobility, increasing the range of motion of joints, and increasing muscle strength. There are also occupational therapy rooms, which are for adapting to everyday life. And of course, we have psychologists working with military personnel. This tandem of physical and psychological rehabilitation has been shown to be quite effective and efficient in the recovery of military personnel. We work with the prosthesis, work with our body, procedures, magnetic therapy, laser therapy. We use almost everything we can. Dennis is a soldier of the 25th Separate Airborne Brigade. He has already undergone prosthetics. It was done in Washington, D.C. Now at the rehabilitation center, he is working on getting used to living with it. It takes time to get used to the prosthesis because it is constantly pressing, and this is only the second month. The period of adaptation and rehabilitation with the prosthesis usually takes from three to four months, but everything is down to the individual. More than 13,000 patients have already received rehabilitation care and recovery centers. These are military personnel and their injuries were sustained while performing combat missions. These are often mind blast wounds, traumatic brain injuries, spinal injuries and amputations. My cervical, thoracic and lumbar spine were damaged. Currently, my rehabilitation here is going well. We are building up my pelvis and leg muscles. Artem is now doing everything he can to start walking again. He says that there are few centers that rehabilitate patients with spinal injuries. This is one of them. At first, the doctors told me that I would be completely bedridden. Then, when I sat up, they said I would be in a wheelchair. When I showed that I had already gotten back on my feet, the same doctors told me that I had every chance of walking. We cannot assume that people with spinal cord injuries should only be in a wheelchair. Despite their severe injuries and long rehabilitation, the soldiers assure us that they plan to return to service eventually. Winning. That will be the main motivation. <laughs> Turkey hosted the largest prisoner exchange in recent times between Western countries and Russia. As part of the operation, 24 prisoners were released who were held in prisons in seven different countries – the U.S., Germany, Poland, Slovenia, Norway, Russia and Belarus. Multiple countries helped get this done. They joined a difficult, complex negotiation at my request. And I personally thank them all again. And I've thanked them personally and I'll thank them again. All told, Russia has released 16 prisoners. Eight Russians who are being held in the West will be sent home as well. These 16 prisoners from Russia have, that Russia has released include four Americans, five Germans, seven Russian citizens who are political prisoners in their own country. Notably, Russia is releasing Wall Street Journal reporter Evan Gershkovich <laughs> and former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan, both accused of espionage, a Russian-American journalist Alsu Kurmasheva and Russian oppositionist Vladimir Karamurza. Meanwhile, among those who returned to Russia was a FSB officer and convicted murderer Vadim Krasikov. He was released by Germany. Russia started a third round of tactical nuclear weapons drills, stated the Russian Defense Ministry. Units of the Central and Southern Military Districts will practice receiving special training munitions for the Iskander M missile systems and deploying them to designated launch areas. The exercises will also include Air Force units arming their planes with nuclear weapons and executing flight patrols. Hungary has eased its visa restrictions for Russian and Belarusian citizens. According to a new policy, visitors from the two countries are permitted to work in Hungary for two years without having to go through security clearance. They are also allowed to bring their families with them. In a letter seen by the Financial Times, Manfred Weber of the European People's Party calls out the new Hungarian visa policy. He states that it could create grave loopholes for espionage activities, potentially allowing large numbers of Russians to enter Hungary with minimal supervision, posing a serious risk to national security. The European Commission stated that it would contact Budapest in order to clarify the scope of the scheme and whether or not it falls under the remit of EU rules, in order to ensure the safety of the Schengen and the Union area. Moldova has expelled a Russian diplomat, as stated on the website of the country's foreign ministry. 
the Russian ambassador to the Republic of Moldova was summoned to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and handed a note declaring one of the embassy employees as a persona non grata. According to the ambassador, this applies to the assistant military attaché of the Russian embassy. Ukrainian fencer Olga Harlan won Ukraine's first medal at the Paris Olympics. In a match against South Korea's 2008 Olympic champion Choi Soo-yeon, Olga secured the bronze medal in a narrow 15-14 victory. Harlan faced a challenging 5-11 deficit before mounting a comeback to claim the victory. Earlier in the competition, she defeated athletes from Japan, Azerbaijan, and Hungary, losing only to French host nation athlete Sarah Balzer. With this bronze medal, Olga Harlan has tied the record for most Olympic medals won by a Ukrainian athlete. She is also the first Ukrainian to win medals at four different Olympic Games. All the athletes here, Ukrainian athletes, are suffering. All, all of us, we have a, our own story. But I hope this medal brings will bring to my country some joy, some hope. And uh, like if to see the last bout, never give up. And it shows that Ukraine will never give up. And the second medal for Ukraine was won by Serhii Kulish. He took silver in shooting, winning the medal in the final from three positions at a distance of 50 meters. First place in this discipline was won by Liu of China and the bronze medal went to Kusale from India. Ukraine, in cooperation with Turkey, launched its second corvette Hetman Ivan Vyhovsky at an event held at the Istanbul Manufacturer Shipyard. This news comes almost one year after the first similar class corvette Hetman Ivan Mazepa was launched. The timeline for both corvettes to enter into service in the Ukrainian Navy is undisclosed, as testing is still underway. Earlier in July, the Ukrainian Navy shared a video of the flagship Hetman Ivan Mazepa first setting sail. That's it for today. We're United24 Media. Thanks for staying with us and see you next week.